Yeah, yeah. Just relax. Then I can hit, and there's not as much uh, uh, movement away from the target. That, that I think is very important. Okay, so that's the ura shuto. Amote, open, ura, close, fudokan. The next hand position, that next hand strike that uh, we want to discuss is called the shako ken. And Dale, if you just do the shako ken from the shizen so that we can take a look at it and we'll chat about it in a second. Okay, more time. And maybe from the side. Okay, the shako ken basically is a, a finger strike, kind of a clawing strike. And um, I think it comes, uh, it, it's inspired by part, in part from the Togaku Ryu of Nijutsu, where they had the actual shako, the uh, hand claws. And maybe you've seen them in ninja movies or something like that, but they were metal bands and they had little claws out of them, and they were used for clawing, for climbing, for blocking swords and things like that. We're not going to use them here today, but the same uh, feeling is the same and, uh, uh, for this technique. What you, we want to do is just open our hand, put the, the, our palm out like this, and curl our fingers like this, so that when we attack, it's kind of a strike with this palm and also a strike with the fingers. When you're done, you can also just close your hand, and, and it's kind of uh, a, kind of a nasty thing. Just do it if it's a you know you really have it's an emergency. But for women who are maybe being attacked by a, a much larger person, this is a very important uh, strike to, into the eyes or into the face that could uh, really blind the person for a second or disorient them enough so that you could get away. And this is uh, kind of how it would be applied, for example. So Dale would come up and maybe just slap my face. Ooh, and I would just reach out of the way, go in, and just you can see that I'm kind of digging into his eyes and his cheekbones and his tear ducts and things like that. I'm not going to do it very hard because, it, frankly, it's uh, unnecessary and it feels terrible. And you're only going to have to practice it a couple times uh, with your friend before you'll be very willing to move on to something else. But uh, I would suggest you get some kind of foam rubber or maybe a cantaloupe or something like that to practice on and you know try to build your fingers up don't give yourself carpal tunnel syndrome over it, but fit, build your fingers up so that you're used to you know gripping and clawing and and uh, very hard and with great power and again it's not just the fingers do it again please it's not just the fingers I'm using my whole spine and body to take the person down okay so it's not just that's the, with my hands, I'm not just clawing with my hands, it's clawing with my body and bringing them down. Use my whole spine, my whole body, a lot of intention in there too. So ladies with your, with your nails, this is a really a good attack. And you can, you've, you can see these kind of attacks, the man comes up very quickly, whoa, and you're just trying to block, your, block him, make yourself safe, just dig in there with the whole body down, then you know, get on out of there. Okay, so that's the shako ken. Shako ken. Right. Next is the boshi ken. Boshi is thumb. And Dale, if you do the boshi ken, front view and side view. Oh, that's very good. Do it one more time. Okay. Did you notice how when he can do it real slow? When he comes out, he, it almost looks like a punch. Almost looks like Fudo Ken. That the last split second, he puts his thumb on top and reaches straight out. And it's not just his thumb that's hitting, but you, know, you can see that his whole body is delivering that strike. That's really well done. Do it sideways so they can see that. Watch how he extends right through. It's not just his thumb hitting, but the whole body is hitting behind that thumb. That's really well done. One more time. Very, very nice. Okay, so you can see how this, this would be done too. Maybe he's attacking me in the stomach and I'm moving out of the way and I strike right down into there and keep pushing a person to the ground. This is good for the, the small of the ribs, soft places, soft places. Punch to the face, 
boom, strike into the side of the neck is good, into the eye, face is good. This is all good for the bow she can. Even to the muscles of the, of the arm. Into the eye, bow she can, right? Okay. But notice, you can't just do this with your thumb and you'll find, you'll find that if you just try to poke somebody with your thumb, that you're gonna end up injuring your own thumb. It's important first that the thumb be supported with the other fingers. You can see how I'm doing that and how, how Dale kind of pushed forward. And then the whole thumb is supported by the arm, the shoulder, the spine, the leg, the hip. It's not just poking somebody with their thumb. That is just gonna hurt your own thumb. Okay, so the bow she can. I can't do any better than Dale just did it. So you could, you've got a very good example of it right there. Thumb goes out, and then attack with your knees. Lined up right, the alignment's good. That's the bow shikan. Finally, let's talk about the shikan ken. Shikan ken is, uh, it probably, again, came from those shako uh, wristbands with the claws that they used in the togakure ryu, the ninjas from the togakure ryu used. used. And if you think about it, if you had this big band on your hand, you wouldn't be able to close it into a regular fist, would you? It, your hand would only be able to close kind of about this far. So what they learned to do was uh, punch, be able to claw, but also punch with, the, with these bands on. So the punch actually looks more like this than, it, than this. Like this with a little hollow in it. And it's delivered there. Would you deliver a couple so they can see it in, in context? Okay. And see how those knuckles kind of fly out. Do one with the knuckles on, on top. See, it could be that way also. Okay, and sideways. You know, sideways and knuckles, both sideways and knuckles on top. So that's sideways, you can see his hand. And knuckles on top, it's kind of sliding in there. And, uh, I think I would use this this kind of a this kind of a strike for if Dale is punching me again. Maybe the throat, huh? Or um, I'm, uh, I'm we're grappling a little bit like this, and I, I can't I don't he's got his chin down he's I can't really get my punch my fist in there so I'm I'm going to switch it and see I can slide right in underneath his his uh, chin with that Shikang Ken in a kind of a grappling situation. So again, let's take a look at the hand. The striking portion is right, these knuckles here, it's supported by kind of squeezing these fingers together and you get a little, kind of a little hollow there in your hand. And you can hit this way. Hmm, you can, if, if Dale were to punch, I can use this to strike into the, you know, the nerves of his wrist, and maybe paralyze that hand for a second. Or if he throws a punch again, I can strike right into the uh, throat here. And that's what uh, the Shikan Ken is, is used for. So we have the Fudo Ken, Omote Shito, Uro Shito. We have the Shako Ken, Boshi Ken, Shikan Ken. Work with those uh, five uh, or so fists and uh, use different striking targets. It doesn't have to be a fancy bag, you know, a pillow, a duffel bag with some pillows in it, uh, some fruit, whatever you want to use. Be creative and try to figure out in your mind, gosh, what part of the human anatomy are these different punches most effective for? You find that the thumb is good in certain places, and the fudo can is good for certain places, the shako can is good for certain places. And, uh, you know, with some practice, you, you, you won't have to think about, ooh, I'm going to do a fudo ken now, I'm going to do shito now. It'll just come naturally as you move and you see an opening, your hand will kind of change ninja-like in, uh, in mid-air right before the strike and it'll go into the exact most effective uh, kind of uh, fist for the target that, that, uh, that you find an opening for at that split second. <laughs> The next section is about kamai. Kamai is uh, one of those Japanese words that's a little bit difficult to translate into English. Sometimes it uh, means posture, sometimes it means attitude, 
sometimes it means stance, but basically it's a, what I call a whole body attitude. You're feeling the way you're positioned physically and, your, and mentally also. So it's mental, mental and physical and kind of philosophical at the same time. And so all of these things join together and maybe on the outside it looks a particular way, but in the inside there's a lot uh, going on as well. And also there's a lot of technical or tactical uh, aspects to each one of these come on. Here's a further disclaimer. The Bujinkan system is made up of nine different ryu or nine different schools. And in each of those schools, there are many different kamai, some of which look similar from one kamai to an, from one school to another, and some of which are quite different from one school to, to the other, some of which have the same name, and some of which look the same but have different names. So it becomes uh, a, re a real challenge to keep them all straight, and uh, frankly, I've never really been able to do it. So, uh, uh, and I've talked to my teacher Hatsumi about this, and Hatsumi Sensei says it's really not that important, so uh, I can breathe a sigh of relief on that, but I have them all in my notes. What I've decided to do for us here today is to pick nine kamai that are really um, representative of many of the kamai from the schools. It's not a complete list, but it's very representative, and uh, I wanted to 